Texas, USA, rattlesnake country. Every year in the US, 8,000 people are bitten by snakes, and worldwide, they kill as many as 50,000 people every year. But these creatures' fearsome reputation may be about to change. This facility in Kingsville, South Texas, houses more than 350 venomous snakes from all over North America. Every one of them could kill you. But the scientists from Texas A&M University, who work with these reptiles, believe they could save lives too. Their venom contains a potent cocktail of chemicals that can be used to treat human disease. It's amazing how deadly some of these compounds are, but how they can have a biological function that will be very useful in medicine. Snake venom contains a potent cocktail of more than 60 different proteins with a battery of deadly effects. A snake bite can destroy blood vessels, cause massive bleeding, multiple organ failure, and digest flesh from the inside. The worst cases end in amputation or even death. Brett Welsh knows all about catching the wrong end of the rattlesnake. He's one of the snake hunters who supplies Dr. Perez with specimens. Since he started catching snakes as a boy, he's been bitten 14 times. He's still recovering from his last close encounter with a seven foot rattler. I was using my t-shirt for the snake to focus on so he wouldn't strike me in the legs and I had him by the tail with my left hand to throw him off balance. It's about 30, 35 pound snake, so it's pretty hard for a snake like that to strike up. And it spun to the left and struck up, and it was aiming for my face, and I managed to jump back to get out of that target, but I brought my left hand down at the same time and got nailed on the top of it. Um, within a matter of seconds, my hand swelled up uh, about the size of a baseball. My index finger had started crooking over. Um, by the time we actually got in the truck and got going, my hand was swollen all the way up into my shoulder, and most of my arm was about twice the size it originally was. My wife had noted that my eyes started turning yellow, my skin was turning yellow, I was kind of dipping in and out of consciousness. Um, I had a lot of nervous tingling all over my body. I was starting to get nauseous towards the end of the trip, and as a result, my legs actually did go paralyzed for a while. The, the fatal dosage of venom is 100 milligrams, and I probably got well over 200. So my system was just in a violent shock. It was, all the major organs were shutting down. Brett needed 15 shots of antivenom. He had a lucky escape. But the very same chemicals which nearly killed Brett, in smaller non-toxic doses, can save lives. John Perez is head of the Natural Toxins Research Center at Texas A&M. The real interesting thing about uh, snake venom is that these same molecules that cause damage when humans are envenomated can have medical importance. These molecules are, are, can be used in treatment of strokes, heart attacks, and uh, even in some cases there's prevention of the metastasis in cancer. Dr. David Sherman recently conducted a trial of a new drug for strokes. The drug was discovered through a chance observation of patients bitten by a relative of the rattlesnake. When they drew blood from these people, their blood wouldn't clot. It wouldn't form the, the normal clots that occur. Uh, now, you, one would think that if this were the case, that these people would die of, of bleeding complications, but in fact, very few did. As a matter of fact, within a matter of a few weeks, their blood returned to its normal coagulation state. Uh, and so the question arose as to whether or not there might be something in the snake venom that could be used to break up clots or prevent clots. Drugs which dissolve clots are known as clot busters, and they're the mainstay of treatment for strokes. When a stroke occurs, as we can say here, these white lines represent arteries to the brain. This artery here is to the right side. The artery to the left side is missing because there's a clot obstructing the flow. And that's reflected here in this scan when we see this region of the brain that shows evidence of a stroke. Given soon enough, a clot buster can clear the blockage and restore the blood flow. The effect that we're hoping for is that this person will be left with no problems with their vision, no neurologic problems at all, or at least we'll minimize it. Though the drug has not yet been approved, the trial showed that it could help 8 to 10 percent more people recover from a stroke than conventional clot busting therapy. To apply to that over 500,000 strokes, a therapy that makes 8 or 10 percent of them 
more independent. It's a huge number of, uh, of people. It's to find more drugs like these that Dr. John Perez, who heads the Natural Toxins Research Center at Texas A&M, risks life and limbs in the search of new specimens. The team makes regular hunting trips all over North America to catch snakes. Each species and subspecies has its own unique venom, and any one of them could be the source of a new drug to treat cancer, heart disease, or stroke. To find out what's in the venom, it's put through a process known as high-pressure liquid chromatography. The venom is separated into its individual components, shown as peaks on this display. Once isolated, the ingredients of the venom can be analyzed for potentially useful effects. Sophisticated equipment precisely measures what effect these compounds have on human blood. What this machine does, it measures how well uh, your blood clots, how, how well your, uh, your clotting mechanism is in your blood. And what we use it for is to see how our snake venoms affect uh, blood clotting. The red line shows normal blood the black line the effect of adding venom, in this case from the Grand Canyon pink rattlesnake. The clotting process shown by the peak in the red line is drastically reduced. But what we hope to do is make some of these venoms available for biomedical researchers not only in the United States, but throughout the world. That's why people like Brett will go on hunting snakes. Three months on, he still can't move his hand, and he may never fully recover, but his brush with death hasn't stopped him. The night I got out of the hospital, I went right back at it just to prove a point. I wanted to make sure that I was okay. 